On 17th July, 6.40 in the morning, my elder sister shook me and she spoke to me. She said, hey, wake up. We're flying to Turkey. Mom and dad will be waiting for us in Istanbul. I opened my eyes, I looked at her. I thought it was a joke, so I fell back asleep. She shook me again, this time harder. And with a dead serious face, she said, hey, I'm serious. Wake up, we're flying away. Now, it was hard at that time, because the, the night before, I fell asleep thinking about what to wear and where to go with my friends. But I woke up to a plane ticket to Istanbul, never to return. I lived in Moscow for about 17 years, basically my whole life. I was born there, I was raised there, and all of my family in terms of friends, best friends and neighbors were there. My parents had been living there for about 25 years, half of their lives. Not long ago though, we had to return. Why was this? What made my parents stop their 25 year long journey over one night? Did my father perhaps get a better job offer? Or maybe my parents felt insecure due to all the terror attacks happening? Or maybe they just need a change like we all do sometimes? Well, the reality is, my parents were among many other, my family was among many other families that had to return. Some of you may guess why, but for those who still don't understand or still don't know, let me take you back to 2015, when a Turkish jet shot down a Russian one. And that occurred just before my birthday, but thankfully I did not face any sort of alienation or I was not a target of oppressing comments. But after all, it did make a change in the community and in, the sur in my surrounding. Now, I live in a great city and I study in a tremendous school. I have great friends and great teachers. What about those people who don't get such opportunities? We're not really free on making our choices and our decisions depend on others' choices. Not long ago, I read about the Cuban Missile Crisis. And most of you may know that after World War II, the USA and the Soviet Union was a button away from wiping each other off the map. And in 1961, USA tried to overthrow the newly formed communist regime in Cuba. And Cuba simply responded by requesting help from USA's biggest enemy, the Soviets. Soviets somehow managed to sneak in missiles into Cuba. And when John F. Kennedy noticed that, he simply decided to intercept any shipment to, Cu to Cuba. The Soviets saw this as an act of war, and both nations were ready. The following year, in 1962, the Soviets shot down an American jet with one of their missiles. And America simply responded by damaging one of the Soviet submarines that was 65 meters below the surface. Now, when you're 65 meters below the surface, you might have a hard time understanding what's going on up there. In that submarine, there were three officers. Officers that had too much power. Officers that had to decide whether or not to begin a missile war. Two of the officers said, yes, let's do it. Let's take action. While Vasily Arkhipov thought about it and just declined the call for war. Vasily Arkhipov was doubtlessly the hero of the day, saving hundreds of thousands and possibly millions of lives. How different the outcome had Vasily Arkhipo been in another emotional state? Why does my life or your life depend on someone else's moral beliefs or ideology? We all take decisions, we all make decisions in our lives, some small enough not to even affect our lives, but some big enough to change a community. Today I stand here to tell you how a single tiny action of yours can change hundreds and thousands of people's lives. To understand more and to see more, just change your perspective and look beyond yourself. Stop thinking as an individual and start acting like the world citizen you are. Think about the things that we do in our daily lives, the simplest things. Everything from tipping a waiter to leaving a public toilet seat clean creates a change in someone else's life. From how you act to how you talk has a say in someone else's daily life. 
You cannot know how impactful racist, sexist, or oppressing comments can be unless you've been called a terrorist before like I have or unless you've been a target before. The minimal acts such as smiling at people, having a conversation with them, listening to them, avoiding, avoiding racist and sexist idioms and sayings can make my life better, your life better, our life better. Change your perspective. Think differently. Thank you.